the laws of any state are broken, the duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Enforcement agencies must constantly uphold all state laws. When an open violation occurs, with the community's tolerance, the operation eventually becomes bigger and more dangerous with additional vices. When the Club Bahamas opened a gambling casino against the state law, the law enforcement agencies moved rapidly to close it, a move that called for extraordinary measures. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? You have to see the production this girl makes with the lipstick, Al. Too bad we can't take pictures of what goes on in front of that mirror. Sell them as souvenirs. Hello. This is Al Sandy. Thank you. Come out and be our guest some night. Bring the wife. Bye. Dickerson, the filling station man. Just saw Sheriff Bishop and a carload of deputies heading this way. See that he and his wife have a good time when they come out Saturday. Dickerson, right. Sorry to interrupt your pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. We have a report there's a raid on the way. Our floor men and dealers will buy up your chips. This room is closed for tonight. Don't worry, we have about ten minutes, but the main dining room will remain open. As you know, it's our policy to protect our patrons in situations like this. Let's go, boys. Sheriff, good evening. Is this an official visit? Uh, pronounced raid. You have a warrant, of course. Oh, you know I have. Here. I assume this is in good order. Well, you can take it up with your attorney. Good evening, Sheriff. Go ahead, Sheriff. It isn't locked. So you were tipped off again, huh? Well, if I'd known you were coming, I certainly would have had my chef prepare your favorite dish. Steak and kidney pie, isn't it? Oh, you know a lot about me, don't you? My job, Sheriff, as a restaurant man. Uh-huh. What is it? You've been here before, Sheriff, so you know this is our private banquet room. If you and your department wish to avail yourself of it, a reservation can be arranged. Now, one of these days, I'm going to take over the whole place. I won't need a reservation, thanks. Sheriff, I can still use a man like you around here at night. You can do it off duty. The hours aren't bad and the money's pretty good. Uh, no thanks, Mr. Sandy. Well, what's the matter? Your money, it stinks. <laughs> well, frankly, Dan, I might just as well write these people a letter and tell them when I'm going to raid. Well, that's what you're getting this call for. I need some outside help. Oh, wait a minute. Come in. Yeah, Sheriff, I got the whole picture. I'll be down in a couple of days. No, a couple of days. That's the best I can do. I'm tied up. Sorry. Okay, goodbye. Sheriff Bishop, Wilcox County is in trouble. You know that country at all? No, sir. I've never been down there. All right, find me four officers haven't been there. I'll drive down with them in the morning. No, oh, what's the matter? He told the Sheriff a couple of days. Don't you trust him? Sure, 100%. He's a good officer. That's why he needs help. You see, a gambling house he's been trying to close. Well, they've been tipped off three times running. He can't get the evidence he needs for legal proof. Leak in his department? No, no. He's checked all of his men out to his own satisfaction. His trouble is he's living in a community where most people don't realize that gambling's against the laws of this state. He can't do anything without it getting out, and they pass it along. 
That's why I don't want Bishop to know I'm there until I'm there. Four officers. That's right, in uniform. Here at 8 o'clock in the morning. I'll keep you posted from there. Yes, sir. That's right, Sheriff. Right away. Five miles the other side of Bridgeton, where the old road turns off. And make sure you're alone. Right. Now, let's get off the main road. Expecting you for another day at least. Now we got lucky. We were able to get away. Look, when you make your raid tonight, I want you to use my men. You lead them. Maybe the locals around here will have a little more respect for you when they find out what you got behind you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. We're being raided. Now, there's no cause for you to be alarmed. The dealers will buy up your chips. I'm very sorry. This door is locked at the request of the private party who is using the banquet room tonight. But Mr. Sandy can it open seems it Seems to be the you. trouble, Frederick. Why, hello, Sheriff. Back again? Well, these gentlemen, these officers, they insist on entering the private banquet room, Master Sandy. Well, of course. Allow me. Okay, you can open this one, too. Is it locked? Now, stop stalling, Sandy. You know we can break it down if we have to. Well, you're welcome to try, Sheriff, but I should warn you that this is a fire door. Wood veneer over boilerplate steel. It might be easier on you if you wait until I brought the key from the maintenance office. Sheriff? It hasn't changed a great deal since the last time you were here, has it, Sheriff? Another one? Yes, thanks to the double doors. You worried? Plenty worried. I'm thinking it might be a good idea to close down for a couple of weeks. Just operate the restaurant. It cost a lot of money. So the lawyers. Sheriff Bishop would love to hear you say that. Well, Barney's a sterling young officer and a 20 carat nuisance, but we can live with him. This raid tonight was highway patrol. Barney's gone outside for help. That's what worries me, Ollie. 
they didn't do any better than Barney's been doing right along. <laughs> they even looked pretty foolish when they broke in on that banquet. Maybe they did, but they're still state cops. That means we're getting the kind of attention I can do without. It's something to think about. I thought this would be a good place to talk. I don't want people looking over our shoulder. Well, after last night, I don't know what difference it makes. You know, all we proved was it's possible to surprise Sandy. We didn't make out any better. Prove something else, too. If we're going to pull a successful raid in that club, we're going to have to control the two doors between the dining room and the casino. Well, that means we have to have a man in the casino next time we raid. Yeah, and I'm going to try and be that man. Well, there's something else you can do for me. Well, name it. Unless we're going to make a career out of raiding Al Sandy's club, we're going to have to knock him off once and for all. Now, I can't figure it, but last night, within three minutes, he was able to conceal all evidence that there was gambling going on there. Well, we have to know where he's hiding that equipment. Well, that's where you can help. Wow. I want you to go to the county engineers and get the original plans on that building. Oh, well, that's good enough. Where will I contact you? I'll be at the Normandy Plaza Hotel, registered under C.C. Hammond. C.C. Hammond. Yeah, the big cattle and oil man from Texas. Huh? <laughs> C.C. Hammond, I've got a reservation, haven't I? Uh, of course, Mr. Hammond. This way, please. Shrimp cocktail, double steak, rare baked potato, and a Caesar salad. Yes, sir. Keep the change. Everything was to your satisfaction, Mr. Hammond? Yeah, it was wonderful. Say, by the way, I've been watching those doors. I've been seeing people go in there all evening. What's going on? A private party, sir. How private? I'll send Mr. Dyer to your table, sir. Thanks. Mr. Hammond? Yeah, that's right. I'm Molly Dyer, the manager here. Our uh, maid he tells me you might be interested in our private party. Well, your club's famous, Mr. Dyer. Some of my friends said I might find a little action around here. Your friends, uh... Do I know any of them? One of the managers of the hotel I'm staying at, the Normandy Plaza. Sid Burke's his name. Oh, Sid's my boy. I'll see what I can do. Okay. License plate in his car checks out all right with the registration of the hotel. I spoke to Sid, and he said this man Hammond's been a happy little gold miner with the help around the hotel. Big tipper. I think he's okay. You may be right, Ollie. Chances are you are. But we've been getting too much attention from the authorities lately. We might be stretching our luck to let any strangers into the casino until our temperature drops about 20 degrees. I think that's smart. I'll give Hammond the bad news. Right. My money's not good enough, that's what you're trying to tell me. Not at all, Mr. Hammond. Well, that's the way it sounds. As I told you, that's a private party. If they don't want any outside guests, there's nothing I can do about it. I hope you'll stop in and have dinner with us again before you return to Texas, Mr. Hammond. You can bet on it. <laughs> Sandy had a smart operation in the Club Bahamas. There was only one way to stop that operation. A man inside the casino when it was raided. Sergeant Corey was called. It was his assignment. Still rather pose as a building inspector. As suspicious as Sandy is now, he wouldn't believe you. Climb to the top of the pole, get in your private phone booth, call the sheriff, tell him where you are.
Hello. Right, Corey. We're inside of the club now, Sheriff. You can make that call. Okay. Check your watch. I'm making the call in exactly 30 seconds. And good luck. Hello. Who? There's nobody here by that name. No, sir. No, Mrs. Crittenden. You have the wrong number. Well, I hope this works. It better work. Now, listen to me. Till Barney hangs up the phone, the line's out of order. All incoming calls will get a busy signal. There'll be no dial tone on the line. Now, Barney's going to hang up in exactly 21 minutes. And in 22 minutes, I'll be a big success as a telephone repair. Keep your fingers crossed. Oh, wait a minute. Come here, come here. Now, the measurements of the casino were very important. If you run into any kind of trouble, forget them. The important thing is to get invited back as a guest. So make them like you. Good luck. we do for you? Aren't we paying our bill? I wouldn't know about that, sir. I have an order to check out some trouble on Calumet 56098. Do you have that number listed here? Calumet 56098? Sure, that's our private line, but nothing wrong with that. I just had a call on it about 10 minutes ago. Well, that's possible. The repair department said they only had to report a few minutes asking to see what I could do before I came in. If it's all right with you, I can check it out in a hurry. Okay, I guess. What is it? That trouble report was correct. Listen, no dial tone. I just had a call on this line not 10 minutes ago. That's the way the ball bounces. You want it fixed, don't you? Sure I do, I guess. How long will it take? Depends upon how long I am spotting the trouble. 10 minutes, 20. What are you doing in here? Measuring the room. Why? What's that got to do with the phone in the office? Well, there's a power leak somewhere, sir. I thought maybe the electric power lines had crossed over our line somewhere. Well, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Just fix the phone. Hmm? Yeah. And I better get off the dime or I won't be through in 20 minutes like I promised. I guess I found the trouble all right. Where was it? Really, it was stuck. Of course, it's an open circuit. It'll be okay now. Thank you. You really have got quite a place here, mister. First time I was ever out. I heard some big stories about it. Thanks. Don't suppose you let a working stiff in here when it's open? Even if he's wearing his best clothes. We're not that exclusive. It just, uh, it takes a lot of money. I might be willing to go it just once in my life. But I thought I wouldn't get kicked out of my ear. Oh, that wouldn't happen. Sure be great. Sure appreciate it. Okay, my friend. I guess we owe it to you for fixing the phone. Just ask for me, Ollie. You'll have the run of the place. Only understand one thing. Yeah? If you get hurt, I don't want to hear any crying. You won't hear no crying out of me, Mr. Dyer. Thanks. A million.
How'd it go? We got it made. Not quite. You got the blueprints? Yeah, sure. Now, let's take a look, huh? Well, the county engineer stirred me out of the architect that put the building up. It was originally a private residence, Dan. Sandy made it over inside. Now, the living room here is now the main dining room. This is what he made into his office in the uh, casino. Well, what's this tell us? What are we looking for? Looking for a space big enough to hide some gambling equipment in. How big a place would he need? How about? Oh, a fair-sized coat closet. Well, from the information I get, all this equipment breaks down. Get that sketch I made, will you? I made a scale sketch in the measurements he took at the casino. Oh. Not a boy. Now, this is the outside wall right here. We'll match it up with the blueprint and see what we get. Mm -hmm. It's what we're looking for, and it fits. When they remodeled, they let the outside wall drift. By the time they finished, it's quite a space, enough to hide a couple of hot roulette wheels and some crap tables in. Hey, take a look over here, right in the back. Here's a door. What do you know about it? Well, there's no door there now. What's out in the back there? Oh, well, it's the rear of the building, just a, a lot of shrubbery. No sign of where the door used to be, hmm? No, not that I know of. Why do you guys bet the door is still there and working? Oh, I never gamble, Dan. Not when I'm betting against a sure thing. Looks like we're going to have to revise our plans to take in that back door, and I think you better cover it, Sheriff. Good. Prep this up. Now, look, it's 4 6. You go on about your business as if nothing happened. You'll be back at the club at 9 12 tonight. 9 12, right? I will stage the raid for 9 15. I don't want Sandy and company to know what hit him. Sir, do you have a reservation? Uh, Mr. Dyer is expecting me. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. You can't go in there. Oh, tell Ollie the telephone repairman is here. I'm sorry, sir, but I can't leave the door. What do you mean? Mr. Dyer said I was to have to run the place. Just ask for him. I take my orders from Mr. Sandy. He said no new faces in there. Can't you send for Mr. Dyer? His offices are right over there. Okay, Hall. Well, I'm just doing what Mr. Sandy said, Mr. Dyer. I understand. I'll take the responsibility for this gentleman. Thank you, Mr. Dyer. Everything all right, Mr. Hammond? Yeah, it's just perfect. Fine. That's what we like to hear. Closed. I wouldn't do that if I were you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a raid. Stay where you are and you won't get hurt. Take him with you. Shall we go inside and see if I can find a little action? Turn him over in the corner, boys. This time we made it, Dan. Nice going, Sergeant. Thank you. Sergeant? Oh, don't take it personally. You can't win them all. And we'll open again. That's a promise. And we'll close you again. That's a promise, too. Take him in with a rest. Dan! We were right about that secret door, Sheriff. Yeah. Mr. Sandy was about ready to go for a nice long walk. Is this necessary, Sheriff? After all, we're not criminals. You're so wrong. <laughs> The Highway Patrol story next week is a very unusual one. We hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, it isn't the car that kills, it's the driver. This is Roderick Crawford saying see you next week.